Initiating startup sequence. Five, five, four, four, three, three, you are now plugged in. Hey guys, and thank you for tuning in to episode 216 of the Plug and Play podcast. I'm your host, Zach, and alongside me, as always, is Tim. Welcome, minions. Hey guys, uh, so we are having a little bit of uh, technical difficulties on our uh, recording side of our viewing, but you know what that is, Tim? What is that? My graphics card's updating. What the hell? Yeah, well, I decided to do it during the show. It's a great time to do it. I've never seen audio lag from a graphics card. Well, it's because it, my it's because the graphics are turning on and off. Okay, so that was not, weird. It's not relaying it to the TV that we're watching. I it just on. never seen that before. Yeah, it's very odd. Um, first half tasty treats are brought to us by Cold Fire Brewing. We're drinking Tangle of Tigers at seven point five ABV and uh, IBUs. They're not going to tell us. A blend of our favorite hops woven into a canvas of sunlight and unicorn tears. Not created for the faint of hearted IPA lover, but for those who love the journey, aromas of guava, passion fruit, and sweet lemon burst from sweet the glass. Lemon burst. Sweet lemon burst. A unique experience of juicy tropical flavors tangled tangles your taste buds and embrace both fierce and beautiful. Our tangle is a palate blender unlike any other. Cheers. Cheers. It's a, it tastes like unicorn tears and tiger blood. And sweet lemon, whatever. Sweet lemon. It's, um, it's strong. It is strong. I, like I don't it know how many use it is, but it's a lot. They're not going to tell us. It's fine. So, like Tim, mm-hmm. what what have you been up to this week? Uh, Halloween happened, and honestly, this Spooky year... Spooky Halloween! This year was kind of a letdown. It was sort of middle of the week, and um, we didn't have any plans. Like, I had the night off, wife had the night off. Kids, of course, had plans. They went trick or treating, got a ton of candy. Um, I Did they get any crack cocaine candy? No. What about the meth- methamphetamine candy? No. What about the cyanide candy? No. What the fuck? My son got ten full candy bars though. Wow. Well, any cyanide candy again? No. No, damn. So yeah, I don't, I, we we listened. Your kids to some, are both still alive from the candy. Yeah. Mm. I had some candy too. Mm. We didn't have as many kids as usual. For I, it was rainy. Maybe that was it. But like. By a factor of ten, like we had like two or three hundred kids last year, we probably had like forty. It was weird. Oh shit! Right. Um, I did watch this. This is almost becoming like a segment. Like, what is Tim watching? Um, so if you hate it, let me know. But I'm going to tell you the cool thing that I watched this week, which was um, a Cartoon Network show from 2014 called um, Over the Garden Wall, and I had never heard of it, but someone was talking about it as being kind of appropriate to watch around Halloween. Okay. And I freaking loved it. Like, I meant to just watch one out of the ten episodes. Um, but I sat down with my daughter and her friend who was over for the night. And we just we just binged through all ten episodes. Like, Oh, Jesus. How long back. are these episodes? Half hour? Uh, ten to fourteen minutes. Oh, that's not bad. No. So it was like, I don't know, hour and a half. Nice. Um, I'm going to play you some clips from the show that kind of give you a flavor um, in a second. If you are interested in it all, the first episode is put up officially by Cartoon Network on YouTube. So you can check it out. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, it's available on Hulu. Um, I think you can buy the DVD for like 10 bucks. Oh, nice. At Walmart or Amazon or whatever. Um, I'd really recommend it. It was surprising to me how cool it was. On the surface, it's like this story of these kind of goofy kids lost in the woods. And it's like, you know, kind of silly. But then there's like this deep under... And you're not going to hear this in the clips I'm playing. But there's this deep, dark understory that just kind of comes through. And it's, it's really cool. Hmm. So here's like, uh, I don't know, 30 or 40 seconds of random clips from the first couple episodes. All right. Any advertisements? Thanks. I owe you a favor. So, um, you two are lost kids with no purpose in life, right? Uh huh. <laughs> you guys find this place as creepy as I do, right? So it's some kind of weird cult where they wear vegetable costumes and dance around a big thing. They seem nice enough. Okay, you're in denial. That's fine. Um, Beatrice, <laughs> why are you pretending I'm this guy's nephew? We need money. You're scamming him? I was thinking more like flat out stealing from him. What? No way. Why not? We already stole a horse. Hey, guys. No, we didn't. Fred's a talking horse. He can do whatever he wants. I want to steal. It's <laughs> gotta be a ghost. That's but not all I want to play for either. How can you be so certain? Because I really, really want to see a ghost. Really bad. But but he really wants to see a ghost. I know, man. Really, it's, really it's really good. I um I really strongly recommend it. And watching it 
between Halloween and Thanksgiving is like the right time of year to watch it. It's, nice. It's, okay. It's really cool. It's very atmospheric. Um, it's kind of a kind of throwback feel to. Um, I don't know what time period it is. Kind of the same as that one game, um, when water turns to wine. Got an old timey feel to it. It's hard to explain. It's really cool. Never played that. That's the one that had the stories. Remember we saw it at PAX. Oh right, right, right. Okay, it's got yeah. that old timey feel. Yeah, it's okay. really hard to define, but it's just cool. Um, and then uh, just uh, was it last night? Yes. Last night the wife and I um got like very limited quality time together. We had some spaghetti and meatballs, and um, I drank a growler of beer. And she Yourself? had a, yeah, and she had a huge ass margarita, and we watched election results. Um, and I just wanted to play this for everyone who voted. I'm so fucking proud of you guys. Yep. Uh, we're all proud of you for voting. Um, so that happened. That's the next president right there. I'm just saying. I mean, Beto O'Rourke has definitely got some people excited. O'Rourke 2020. But so he, fucking excited. He did not win his race in Texas. So, so I was surprised that they actually aired so fucking proud of you guys. Well, he wasn't, they weren't expecting it. This was him like talking to like his campaign people after like, Hey, good oh. job. Guys. You did you did awesome. Good job. And then, like, it was live, so, I mean, that happens. Um, yeah, but he got a lot of shit for that one. No, the networks that played it did. <laughs> so, anyway. Um, and then this week at work has been weird. Okay, explain. I worked, I worked an extra weird? day. Um, a lot of weird shit happens at where you work. Well, I, I'm just seeing more mental illness out and about. Yeah. Um. So, this person I observed, like, was... Like, you could talk to her, and she would answer, like, normally, but then she would, like, look to the side and start talking to someone who wasn't there. What the fuck? And then at one point, she got out of her chair and was, like, mock knocking an arrow and shooting it at something that only she could see. But again, I talked to her about three times, and every time I asked her a question or said something, she would respond completely appropriately. What the fuck? So, yeah. Um, I mean, she was she, like, she I'm here to get food while I'm fighting the end days for you. Yeah. Um, I mean, she was totally respectful of other people's space. She didn't raise her voice too much, but I, I mean, people were a little uncomfortable because she was just doing random things. Yeah. Um, it was just odd, and I really wish our country had better resources for people with mental health issues. That would That's be it. nice. So, what's been up with your week? Well, I wrapped up Vegas um, with an awesome bout of food poisoning. Do you have any idea what it was? That- Pretty positive it was uh, this chicken company I went to, but I'm not going to mm. name their name because their chicken's delicious. Well, now I don't want to go there. So I'm not going to name the name. So in case we ever go to Vegas, I'm going to be like, hey, Tim, you want to go to this chicken place? I'll be like, no. I'll be like, fine, I'll find a new chicken place. Hey, Tim, you want to go to this chicken place? You son of a bitch. So I went there like last two years ago. It was great. Never, never was sick. I went there this year, and so one thing I really ate all day, and then I was like super sick the next day. I mean, day. chicken can totally make you sick if it's not. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and then the rest of Vegas was fine. I walked around the strip the very last day I was there after I ate the chicken, and uh, ended up at the MGM and uh, gambled there for a while before heading back to my hotel, and then gambling there till the wee hours in the morning. I get the sense you didn't come ahead this time. No, I did not. You did last time. I did. I actually every time besides this time. Hmm. So, hmm, yeah, this time was not a. Uh, it didn't sound like you had as much fun as last year, honestly. When, when I was talking to no, you, no, it wasn't as fun. Hmm. So maybe next year. Yeah. If there's next year. Um. Then basically just getting back into the swing of like an actual normal working week and trying to get caught up from being gone for a week, um, is really hectic in hell. Um. Other than that, I came back with, um, still being sick. And uh, my dad was in town for a couple of days. They decided to surprise us with the trip while I was in Vegas. Um, so they were here, and then they left like the day after I got back. So I was obviously still reeling from food poisoning and uh, didn't really spend any time with them. That sucks. So, yeah, well, I mean, such is life. Um, and then I hung new shelves before I went to Vegas. Yeah, they look so, good. Those They're are right the, over your TV. Yeah, right over my TV, and I got some Zelda memorabilia. Mm-hmm. I have a moon... What was that? Moonlighter. Yeah, the, the coins. little coin bag is pretty yeah, awesome. And the coins are laid out. And then I also have the coins from uh, the Polish breakfast that we went to. Hmm. So I should get a shelf in my den for my Amiibos, if nothing else. You should. I actually have a bunch of knickknacks, too. Yeah. I could do those kind of shelves. They're super simple. Mm-hmm. 
I don't know if I could do your skateboard ones, but I could do those. This is the same. Uh, where did you... Uh, Home get? Depot. Okay, cool. So, and then... Uh, and then, are the shelves actually fixed because they don't look like they are? They are. Oh. With, uh, with clear, double-sided, like, super adhesive, like, cement tape. Sweet. And this has been your plug-and-play home improvement section. Exactly. Sweet. Um, so, yeah, that's what I have been up to this week. You want to talk some news? Let's talk some news. <laughs> Tim, what do you got this week in the news? All right. We actually have a brand new month. Um, well, Wait, when? Uh, like, I don't know, eight days ago? Oh, something shit. Okay. Something like that. So that Seven means days ago, by the way. I haven't been announcing this um, for the last couple months. It's because it hasn't been always this good. But I'm, I'm kind of pumped for this week's, or this month's, rather, uh, PlayStation Plus uh, offerings. There's some Where they're like, every game on PlayStation is free. Um, no, that's no, not what they said. No, no, but there's some good mm. ones. Um, how about Bulletstorm Full Clip Edition? Never played it. Well, I did put up um, on our YouTube channel like about a year ago, I think. Oh, I think we watched this. This is where they're like kick ass and chew bubble gum. Yeah, it's it's kind of like a Gears of War esque, I don't know, sort of shooter. And is there like some audio I could be playing for it? Yes, um, this is like the best swears from the game. Um, you'll like the one at the end. <laughs> You're like my own personal rabbit's foot, boss. Rainbows, puppies, and lucky fucking clovers spew from your ass. Shut up. Ishii, you okay? Alive. I know my ass cheeks had bones that could be broken. <laughs> Let's climb. This thing is holding on by an ass hair. Help us get an evac off world! Yeah! Go fuck yourself! <laughs> you shit paws give chase, I will kill your dicks! What? What does that even mean? You're gonna kill my dick? Well, I'll kill your dick! How about that, huh? Speaking of dick killing parties. <laughs> <laughs> That's the last one. Son of a dick! They got more vultures! We've got more bullets! It's time to kick ass and chew oh, yeah. gum. And I'm all out of gum. That's right, Duke Nukem is an unlockable character in this uh, extended edition of Bulletstorm. That's Storm. fucking sweet. And yeah, son of a dick. like the most, Son of a dick! Most bizarre swears in the game. I'll kill your dick! <laughs> <laughs> so, another game, this is big in my opinion, Yakuza Kiwami. Uh, the very first Yakuza, the one that I believe you bought. <gasps> um, I have them all now. Oh, cool. Yeah, I just haven't played any. <laughs> well, as long as you have Red Dead. Red Dead. Yeah. <laughs> But I mean that's a pretty cool big title. Like that's like I don't that's, know. That's that's zero, right? Or is that the no, first no, one? No, no, that's the first one. That's, that's the remake. That's why they're re- naming it Kiwami to kind of differentiate it since it's uh, remastered a little bit. Gotcha. Uh, for PS3, you don't get... forget the uh, get the pass card, people. You need the pass card. Okay. Pass card. Yeah, it's in Yakuza One. You need the pass card. Don't worry about it. You'll you'll figure it out. Okay, that's it's, a little... uh, it's dropped on the ground near a bush, <laughs> and it's a bitch to find. Maybe not in remastered. Maybe in remastered, you can actually differentiate pass cards from pebbles. I have no idea what you're talking about right now. Okay, um, for PS3, you get Jackbox Party Pack 2. That's a good game. Yeah. I like that. Um, also get Arcado Series, which I have no idea what that is. And then I checked out the two titles for PS Vita, and I'm kind of stoked. Uh, Burly Man at Sea. Does that title sound familiar? No. It was a title that we thought was bizarre, so we looked up the trailer and still had no idea what it was. Okay. So I downloaded it. And it's all touch screen, and there's like a picture on the screen, and you like scroll it, and like when you touch it, something will happen, and the story progresses. And it's like, it's a story. It's literally a story. That's like, cool. There's like text, and like these three burly guys to have like these sea adventures, but you move things around the screen, so it's huh. like an interactive story. That's awesome. And then this last title, <laughs> Roundabout, um, I feel, is it Jeff Gersman that likes FMV games? Yeah. I feel like he probably is all over this one. Um, it's sort of like, I guess kind of like a top-down crazy taxi but your limo keeps spinning you're just literally going in roundabouts well your your entire limo is spinning okay. um so you're, you're driving doing donuts the whole time right and that means you're crashing into shit everywhere okay because you're just it's ridiculous that enough is is weird but then there's like full motion video cut scenes between everything with like really ridiculous b-grade actors like playing the role of passengers and the driver what and the, the fuck and a driving instructor and 
yeah um just stick around maybe at the end of the episode just for a little bonus okay. if you want to see some more of that all right that's my first story you want the next one sure um well maybe oh there we go all right cool um riot games faces global 500 error <laughs> Wow, that's bad. Yeah. I wouldn't want to face um, that. Riot Games faces gender discrimination lawsuit over systematic, systematic sexism. Yes. Um, so Riot Games, which is a creator of League of Legends, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, that's, why, that's being, why I put it as yeah. legendary, League of Legendary Sexism as, on our outline. That's very true. Yeah. Um, is being sued by a former employee and a current employee who have accused the company of gender discrimination, including sexism, sexual harassment, and misconduct. Um, this is all reported by Kotaku. Uh, the former current employees filed a class action lawsuit uh, saying that they put men first environment in the front in the in the front. Like many of Riot Games, female employees plaintiffs have been denied equal pay and found their careers stifled because they are women. Um, so I put this in here just because I've heard several times that Riot Games has definitely got like a bro culture, um, dude, bro, and kind of tangentially we've been talking about like uh rockstar games having their employees work long hours and um i feel like like the games industry is like super close to unionizing oh you remember, you remember the voice actor strike yeah and, um i just feel like it's coming soon and a th- statement in a statement to Ko- kotaku mm-hmm. right game said while we do not discuss the details of ongoing litigation, mm-hmm. we can say that we take every allegation of this nature seriously and investigate them thoroughly. Mm-hmm. We remain committed to a deep and comprehensive evolution of our culture to ensure riot is a place that all rioters thrive. <laughs> Love corporate speak. Love corporate talk. All right, you've heard about BlizzCon, right? Yeah. So they have... Fucking yeah, bro. So they always have like a big reveal at the end, like... One year it was Hearthstone. Um, Usually something something big, massive. With World of Warcraft comes out, right? Or um, when way back when uh, um, Diablo three came out, or something big like that. Well, they had an announcement this year that did not go over. Was well. it like a? Wah, bah, bah, wah, it totally wah. was. Um, Diablo Immortal. It the fuck is this? It sounds cool. I mean, it's a cool title, Diablo Immortal. It's a mobile game, so. The reveal was not met with applause or excitement. Rather, collective sigh filled the room, filled with stunned belief, than raider rolling anger. Gamers were... This is from Forbes, by the way, and I'm reading. Gamers were so unhappy that one even asked the developer panel if this was a delayed April's Fool joke, which is... <laughs> that's pretty harsh. Um, <laughs> question that many deemed inappropriate, <laughs> but also a lot of people found pretty funny. I mean, that's like putting the developers on this... I mean, that's that's harsh. Like, they're, they're showing this thing off they've been working on, and this guy's like, is this an April Fool's joke? But that's, I mean, genuinely about a lot of people feel like... Yeah. Diablo... It's not, not a, a mobile game. It's it's not a super hardcore game, but it's definitely a PC or console game. Like, it was actually kind of a big deal when Diablo 3 came to consoles. Yeah. And there were some people that didn't accept that. But yep. they did a lot of good work with the UI, and they demonstrated that Diablo could be a good experience on consoles. It can be, and that's how I played it. And they're going further with this. And I think their biggest problem is not that they're doing a mobile game, because whatever, they're still going to do Diablo 4, and that's fine. I think the problem was that the way they announced it. Like, it was like their huge announcement. And that's that's not knowing your audience. That's yeah. not... That's, your audience is hardcore PC and console gamers. So, they're fucked up. Yeah. So, uh, in the famous words of uh, Bo Burnham, mm-hmm. Then I said, eat a dick! Eat a dick! Eat a fucking dick like this. Put on your dick eating gloves. Get ready to gobble a dick up. If you don't like this dick, bitch, eat a dick, bitch. And it, it's too bad. So I'm sure there's some people that work hard on this product, but you just gotta know like how to. I mean, I'm not this. gonna lie. I'm gonna try it probably. That, and that's fine. That's great. I just they. That's not. This. This isn't. They this isn't their not, target audience. Well, it, you shouldn't just make that the big reveal, the last thing. The it's just there was the wrong place for that. Yeah. Anyway, let's move on. Let's do some tech talk. Now I gotta switch over to another screen. All right, tech talk. Oh, this is this is not working. Yeah, I'm everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? I don't know. Uh oh. USB C. I'm everywhere. 
And this has been your Tech Talk. Yeah, how much we hate USB-C. Dude, mine's wearing out like none other. Um, I, I'll talk to you later. Okay. So, my receiver died. and Your, I, your what? Receiver. Receiver for what? Um, I have a sound system. It's something you don't oh, have. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Um, I have surround sound. And I enjoy surround sound, and you would probably enjoy it for Red Dead as well. I would I, for kill you, for it right For now. you, I recommend a sound bar. A um, lot simpler, and for the room, it would be fine. Um, anyway, so it, it kind of died slowly. Like, I would turn on my system. Alexa would turn on my this system for me. sexy as fuck. And, and uh, you know, it would boot up everything, but there'd be no sound. So I'd turn off my receiver, turn it on again, and for a while, just turning it off once would bring everything up. And then it was three times. Did you buy this? And then it was this ten. Looks sexy as fuck. I'm getting to it. Okay. Um. So yeah, my old receiver died, and so I was looking for a cheap replacement because you can spend a ton on receivers, like eight hundred dollars. I would say mid price is like three fifty, four hundred. This is really cute that it has a CD and a tuner button on it. Um, that's the thing I kind of like about this model. So I got the Ankyo. Um, let me get the model number again. TX SR three seven three. Um, that was on sale for 200 bucks at Best Buy, down from 250 So even at full price, it's pretty cheap. Um, it's pretty bare bones in the back as far as inputs. It doesn't have a ton of extra, like, composite and component, a bunch of, like, the old stuff like you'd need for older consoles. It's mostly just HDMI and a couple others. Yeah. So you get four HDMI slots, which is enough for my current setup. Um, and then, yeah, it's pretty straightforward. Um... And it's got encoding for, like, DTS. It has 4K Ultra HD pass-through, so that's really cool. That means it will not degrade the signal like my PlayStation VR will. I put 4K in, it puts 4K out, and the HDR encoding. Um, so that's that makes my last So your awesome. video runs through here? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, everything's running to, into that, and then there's one cable up to my TV. Okay. Uh, for the signal, gotcha, the gotcha. video signal. Okay. Um, so setup is is really cool you plug everything in and then you plug a microphone into the front and it's a little cheap microphone looks like it comes with it yeah okay. it's got a really long cable you put it in kind of the center of the room or like where you would kind of want to be listening um so i put it up on a like a bar stool to kind of simulate my torso on the couch okay and then you push a couple buttons and then all of the speakers emit tones that increase in volume like and they go around all five and the subwoofer. <laughs> Deep rumble. <laughs> yeah. And then um, the microphone picks it up. The receiver analyzes it. And it sets all the levels for you. That's cool as fuck. <laughs> it's fucking awesome. And so I don't have to twiddle around with... I mean, I'm sure an autofile would get in their settings and like tweak everything a little bit more. But it sounds fine to me. Like, It sounds great. So super easy setup. Love that. And I have sound again. So yay. Nice. And when we get to what I've been playing, sound is important. So that's my tech talk for this week. Sweet. Should we take a little break? And yeah. Come back and kick it. Sounds good. So a little little preview for one of the games I've been playing. Um, music a big part of it, and I thought we'd play some of that for a break. Awesome. Sounds good. We'll be right back, guys. And we are back. Tasty treats in hand. Same treats as first half. Tim, you ready to kick it? Let's kick it. All right. So behind the scenes, look, I am the one that organizes the Kickstarters most of the time because Zach is busy with work. Yep. And this time I am doing Division of Labor. I am bringing the games. Zach is bringing the tech. All right. Let's do this. Where do you want to start, Zach? Let's start with the Insta Ring. 
The Insta Ring is a wearable camera. I haven't even seen this yet, man. This is cool. It's a first in the ring in the world with a camera with sub superb, not subpar, superb <laughs> pictures and 4K video. Zach gets fired from marketing. It's subpar. <laughs> it's subpar. I, I mean, su- superb. <laughs> yeah, it's superb. This is what I meant, guys. Uh, let's go ahead and roll the video. It's a uh, subpar graphics. It kind of is. Happy people at the beach. Bags. Oh, she's putting on a ring. Oh, they're getting married. That's cute as fuck. Put a ring on it. Wrong finger. Wrong finger. Selfie video pictures. Shock proof. It's got red hair, and I mean, like, bright red. Yeah, this is, like, dyed red. So, the cameras on the inside of his, like... Red shorts, too. He, he can push the little button on the side of the ring. So, instead of a selfie stick, like, the... It's the, literally a ring that, like, I would on, assume... On your finger. Yeah, on your finger that sends it to your device or something, maybe? Probably. Okay, I'm, I'm so over those people at the beach. They look like douchebags. Are they going to talk about it at all, or no? I have no idea. All right, well, they got swimsuits. It looks like it's waterproof, ladies and gentlemen. It's going on a selfie stick. There's a ball. His balls are exploding out of the water. They're going down. I like the... Uh, That'd be kind of cool, like, going down inner tubes or something. That'd be cool. Rafting? Oh, yeah. It's a weird gesture because you don't see anything in their hands. And they're holding it out like taking a selfie like you would with a phone, but it's just the ring. It's very odd looking, but it seems really cool. It's an Insta ring, guys. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna go ahead. That was that fucking time. loud. That was really fucking awesome. No, don't play it again. Holy shit. No. Yeah. No. No, no. Let's get down on this. Oh, God. No. No, no we're not gonna do no, this. No, please, no. No. Okay. no. No. I'm gonna kill you. Uh, I'm gonna reach over there and grab you by the neck. All right, all right, all right, on. all right. I will have your murder. They're on. out of London, UK, hailing from the great state of London. Zach, Zach, what if you were a serial killer with an Insta ring? Think of the possibilities. If you, ooh, you could film the body. Well, like, yeah, first person perspective. Per first person murder. All right, he'd be like Cain and Abel. Sure, if there was technology back then, I think they just had rocks and sticks then, dude. Anyway. Maybe that's all you use in the video. Okay, back in UK. All right. That was back fucking loud, by the way. Back in the London, UK. Mm-hmm. Yep. Tell me about the string. Um, they're looking for eleven thousand seven hundred eighty two US dollars. They're currently at four thousand or not four thousand, forty six thousand one hundred and nineteen, five hundred and four backers. That tells you how expensive this is. Twelve days ago, ladies and gentlemen. Two US dollars to get you a thank you. Um Single pack for ninety U.S. dollars. I kind of wish I'd waited on the Capley. This sounds a little cooler. It's kind of cute. It's bulky ring. I'll say that though. It is bulky. It's it's a very. It looks almost like a uh, skateboard bearing. If you guys have ever seen that before, it's very thick metal. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously it's bigger because it goes around your finger. Um, but it, l- it reminds me a lot of like a skateboard bearing. Um. It's going to be releasing in March 2019. Granddaddy of them all is coming in at 254 USD. Um, it's a triple pack, so you get three of them. Um, and so your one choice of size and, and color. And the other one goes... Dick, 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 dick. <laughs> you got a dick cam, bro. <laughs> I got a cock ring. You got a cock ring video. Oh, some first person video. I, I don't oh want. my god, Pornhub's first internal sex video. I... You know what? I'll bet that's already happened. Don't Google it. Fuck. No. Q, Google this for me. Let me know on no, our uh, WhatsApp no. group, please. All right. So, Instaring. All right. That's the Instaring, guys. All right. Damn, my, what do you got? my first game is called um, Soundfall. So, if you've been listening for a while, you will know that I actually checked this game out at PAX and. Um, Did the Soundfall? Mm hmm. Okay. So, there's actually. Yeah. I love the music in this game. Um, so the music is integral to this game. Like, uh, things happen with the beat. So like, if you strike with the beat, your, stri- your, your attack will be stronger and like things will pulse in the environment. Like, um, 
like the traps, for example, like will pulse. lightning pulses to the music. Yeah, and like you'll be a, like you'll be crossing a bridge, and you need to jump at the right time with the beat. So it's like you really get into the game. Like it was a really cool demo. Um, so this is on Fig actually. Oh shit! Right. Um, um, really cool, bright, almost anime graphics. Um, really, the music was awesome, and it's really part of the game. So you can back it on Fig for just the game for twenty bucks, and you get the just the game. And um, for forty bucks, you get also the digital art book and soundtrack, which might be kind of cool because, like I said, the music is pretty cool. Um, since it's Fig, you can also back it um, as an investor. So take a look at that. Um, yeah, really cool game. Um, fantasy brawler, I guess you'd call it, sort of Diablo light, but with the uh, rhythm that makes it really cool. So that's Soundfall. Check it out. What is your next tech Kickstarter? I thought I was gonna play some more music for you. Um, I'm really into like the like audio vibes of this show. So, so yeah, I do like the sound, the music. Dude, this music amazing. All right, you really want me to continue on? I mean, Tim Hayes. Since, uh, since I know the douche bro like sound like spiel that's coming up i almost kind of want to just listen to more soundfall but okay but we've got to cover your kickstarters too bro i mean you you did give them to me bro yeah so because you're too uh, you gotta pick your actually i know what happens when you pick yours it's a bunch of like comics with boobies i'm helping you out bro i know but that doesn't translate to a podcast no one could see that uh nebula capsule 2 the world's first android tv pocket cinema gonna let them talk about it bro You'll talk about it for a while. <laughs> two minutes and 18 seconds. Skip forward. These two aren't the only ones enjoying Nebula Capsule. Tens of thousands of people around the world have realized that this little bad boy would revolutionize their movies, oh, this guy games, looks like a and videos. And now, thanks to new tech and new ideas, the sequel is going to be so much cooler. Introducing Capsule 2, the world's first Android TV pocket cinema. Netflix and douche. <laughs> Too much butter. Capsule 2 is a couple tricks up its sleeve. With one second autofocus, Chromecast, and over 3,600 native Android TV apps, you can pretty much watch whatever you want, wherever you want, right Get when you want it. Pornhub. And with Camera USB Quick Charge, you can have three yeah. hours of battery life, so it won't die before the villain does. Capsule 2 isn't just for the <laughs> cinephiles. The HDMI port makes it easy to plug and play. Play oh, Xbox, snap. PS4, you just plug and play. Switch in all its high definition glory. Okay, Google. I don't play know soccer if you're highlights proud on of YouTube. that or not. Extraordinary. One of them appears to be going outside. If you're headed outdoors, well, <clears throat> this thing hurls out 200 ANSI lumens. That means it's bright. You see, Capsule 2 boasts a shiny new DLP chip. What's that mean? I have no idea. But someone told me that there are like a million tiny little mirrors in this thing that can project an HD image up to a hundred inches big anywhere you want. Meaning you get to enjoy your entertainment in even brighter environments. <sighs> uh, hear that? Nice. With eight watts of big sound and beautiful bass, your slasher film will echo across the canyon. I wouldn't be surprised if the sheriff showed up. Uh, Totally just Brown. stole that kid's marshmallow. What a douche! But it's not quite finished yet. We still got to apply the finishing touches to Capsule 2 before it's ready to share. So, if you like what you're seeing and hearing, we could really use your support. We promise. Capsule 2 will change the way you enjoy the HD on the, by the go. Way. It's fine for a projector. Like, it's not cheap, though. So if you want the pocket douche by <laughs> Nebula Capsule 2, mm -hmm. it is, uh, they're looking for 50,000 US dollars. They're currently at 1,132,847 US dollars, 2,803 backers, 47 days ago. It is raining in at $200 off, $399. Wow. There's 12 of those left. It's not cheap. If, if you hurry your ass up and get to this, guys, $449 gets you 
the gaming combo, which gets you the Nebula 2 douche 2 protector. Uh, projector, sorry. Um, <laughs> douche protector. <laughs> protector. Okay. And the Nebula gamepad. For the big granddad of them all, it's a deluxe package. $200 off of $699, weighing in at $499 US dollars. See how I said that? It's like the douchey way of saying how much money it costs. It's the uh, Nebula Capsule 2 Projector Protector, Remote Control, USB C Power Delivery Charger, USB C to C Cable, Nebula Travel Case, the Tripod Stand, and the Game Pad. 104 of those out of 200. Okay. I almost feel like I need a palate cleanser after that video. Like, okay. Well, like some more soundfall, maybe. Okay. I mean, sure. I, I would feel better. Okay. Just a little bit. Okay. Just, give me, just a taste. Just give me a second. Yeah. No, I'll give you a second. Yeah. Just... Yeah. She puts the record on. Then she transforms into like this action hero. Yeah. This music is amazing. I'm not going to lie. Just gets me pumped. Man. She like flies off in this fantasy land. She's got this like robo suit on everything's awesome everything's going to the beat bro <laughs> so cool all right i feel better now yeah i feel like i feel like uh i watched that do show all right all right so omno um brought to me with a brother um I hadn't heard of this. Sounds really cool. It's an ex- exploration game. Uh, it's a passion project of one guy. One guy has programmed all of this game. And um, the art style reminds me a lot of Journey, kind of like the colorful but sort of abstract landscape, not super detailed, very bright, colorful. Sort of. also reminds me of Hob a little bit. It's very care, uh, very character driven. Um, there's a lot of movement and a little bit of Zelda in there. Not like as nitty gritty it's more of an exploration game and it just makes me wander around this world and check it out hi Again. my name is Jonas Manke and I'm the solo developer behind Omnu I started working on Omnu two years ago and I do pretty much everything by myself so that's programming designing animating and all the other stuff his animating is the amazing the reason I decided to work as a solo developer was so I could create the game exactly as I imagined it Wow, I've worked really for over 10 like years as a character animator in the film and games yeah, industry. Right. I'm using what I've learned to create a game that can hopefully reach players emotionally. Breathing life into things, especially in 3D, is a real challenge, but it's also the best way to express my thoughts and feelings about the themes that I tackle in Omno. So far, making Omno has been the most exciting and hardest challenge of my life. I'm a married man and a dad of three young wonderful kids, so as you can imagine, most of Omnus development was during late nights after my day job. After getting lots of positive feedback on social media, I decided to go full time in March. I took the chance to invest all of my time and energy into finishing Omno and making my dream come true. I've never asked for help before, so going to Kickstarter is really a big deal for me. The success of Omno wow. depends on your support and valuable feedback. That really looks like Breath now the game the is fast approaching the finish line. The tech and mechanics you are complete. Played Journey, but All that's left is to expand the things. landscapes, add more creatures and extra content for you to explore and enjoy. So if you like what you see, I would be grateful for your support so we can finish Omno together. So is there like a two backing level? There is. Um, so... They're looking. He's only looking for. Um, this is converted from another currency. I'm guessing whatever Deutschmarks maybe. Um, Dutch. No, that's German boy. Deutsch is German. Um, oh. He's a German developer. Um, so he's looking for thirty six thousand six hundred sixty three converted US. He is at thirty two thousand eight hundred and twenty two. So like I would say like ninety percent. Uh, with twenty six days to go, thousand backers, thousand sixteen wow. backers. Um, get the game. Seventeen dollars US. Uh, Digital Deluxe US twenty three gets you also a hearty thank you from the developer. Digital wallpaper back your name in the credits as supporter. Um, digital uh, art to that art book and soundtrack. Um, so Socializer is a level that maybe we'd look at. It's a okay. it's a companion plus an additional key. Oh, that's cool. 
So your companion will have a unique glowing Kickstarter skin. And so I guess there's a, like in the game, you'll have a companion, like a pet or something. Yeah, I think there's floating behind him. Yeah. Um, so you'll get two Steam keys. That's 46 US. So we can talk about that later. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's a bunch of other packages going up to the top tier. Um, sorry. $5,729 as co-producer. Uh, you get your name in the credits as Alpha Tester, the art book, the game, of course, soundtrack, Discord channel, beta access, Alpha access, choose your individual companion, customize your character, your name will be engraved in a prominent monument in the game, an Omno statue. Um, you get to visit the Omno creator and developer in Germany, and your name is co-producer. Um, holy crap, there is one already go at this level. Really? Yeah, uh, there's two left. Two out of three. Jesus. So that's Omno. That's O-M-N-O. -O. Check it out. It looks beautiful. Um, and again, this has got one guy's passion project. It looks really cool. Uh, Jonas Menke is his name. Right. Hmm. So that's what we got for Kickstarter this week. All right. You want to uh, it? You want to talk about some video games? Yeah. Ooh. All right. I'm going to try to play some audio here. We're going to see if this like plays or not. Hold on. I'm going to watch this stupid ad. Got to love YouTube's ads. So YouTube's what is this for? This is just like, we're just trying out some like game audio clip. Okay. Just some random fucking clip. Uh, Alright. I don't know if this is going to work or not. No. It's, it says game time. It's game time. What you been playing, Zach? Red Dead Redemption 2. Yes, you have. Uh, shitload. You told me about a pretty cool glitch you found. Yeah, so there's like a glitch that uh, if you haven't updated for, uh, basically there's like an old burnt out uh, like town, the super small town, and uh, you go in there inside the old sheriff's like headquarters, I guess. Like there's a jail cell. Like I guess it would be assumed to be a jail cell, anyways. Um, the building's all burnt down basically, but there's a uh, like a treasure box like a uh like a little lock, lock box, box. Mm -hmm. underneath his desk and if you open it up there's a gold bar in there still and if you open up the box and you interact with the gold bar like to pick it up and as your character is like halfway leaning down you pause the game and you save the game and then you load that save it kicks you out of the town and you ride back down there and you can pick up 30 of them instead of one of them nice so each gold bar sells for 500 and so it's $15,000 that you get, which is basically like you in game, like money. Nice. So I'm pretty stoked for that. Um, obviously, at this point in the game, I'm not far enough to actually be able to sell the gold bars yet. So my dude just going to be rolling around with like 30 gold bars for a while. Just rich as hell. Just rich as fuck, not being able to spend any of the money yet. So, um, yeah, that's... All I've really been playing besides the one that we've both been playing, so... Jackbox Party Pack? Yeah. So let's talk about Zeeple Dome. Okay, what's Zeeple Dome? That's like Angry Birds, but not. Like, everyone gets to, like, hurl themselves with the controller. Oh, yeah, it's like you're, like... There's, like, aliens, shit. you're trying to shoot aliens, and, like, sometimes the aliens are different colors, mm -hmm. and you, like, move your thumb on your phone or your tablet, whatever you have, like, in a slingshot motion... And you, like, launch yourself at these things, and, like, you're killing monsters or aliens. And or if you are the right color, you're supposed to hit the right alien. So I can't remember. I haven't played all of the Jackbox Party Pack games before, but has there been any other action games no, like no, this? No, nothing that I've ever seen. It works fairly well. It does. It works like, really well. Like, the direction goes, like, the, the direction you were intending it to go, and it's kind of... Your guy does bounce all over the fucking place, though. So. He does. Um, but it feels like you're controlling it fairly accurately. It does. And for using a phone as a controller on a game on your TV, it works surprisingly well. Yeah, it does. It's a lot of fun. Uh, I think the more people playing, the more fun it is. I had, I had, we had six of us. Nice. And just like, just shit just bouncing Just fucking around. shit bouncing everywhere. <laughs> it's like awesome. literally us hitting each other because there are so fucking many of us. So yeah, it's good to see them branching out away from like just the trivia kind of game. Yeah. Um. So yeah, more of that, please. Or fill in the blank. Right. So. So yeah, that's Zeeple Dome. It was a lot of fun. So I've been playing um, Tetris Effect, and something just what fell down. What the fuck was that? I don't know. 
Um, Tetris case? Effect isn't out yet, but they had a free demo weekend, so you get to play like three levels. And the music is freaking amazing in this game. It's available in like standard or or VR. I haven't tried VR yet um, for reasons, um, mainly involving my my stereo. Um, but you'll have a normal like Tetris uh, thing in the middle of your screen, and then it'll be like graphics all around it. And like each stage has like a different theme. Like some will be like water, or and then there's this like it's hard to describe music. But the music actually is sort of tied to the gameplay, like the beats of the um, drop, the the uh, blocks drop. Drop the beat. Well, the the blocks dropping and the and the blocks disappearing when you when you get a line will affect the music. By the way, that's the music for our break music. By the way, yeah, that was Tetris Effect, um, and um, yeah, it all ties together in a really cool experience. Like Tetris is a cool game, even when it's like black and white graphics on your Game Boy, but this is definitely bringing it to a different level. Where you've got the sound and the graphics, and it just it, it it makes it more immersive and just a really cool experience, like kind of a club vibe in a way. Um, and so I I'm looking forward to checking out the PSVR, and I'm actually going to digitally pre-order this game because Damn. You, you get the soundtrack, you get um, some stupid wallpapers, whatever. I want the soundtrack because um, the music's really cool, and it's also discounted like, like four bucks if you pre-order it. So I think it comes out like Friday or something like that. Um, but yeah, this is a really good game for them to offer as a demo because it totally sold me. Um, so check out Tetris Effect. I th- think it's on PC. It's definitely on PlayStation 4. Um, then the other game I started to play is I just had, I got tired of waiting. Um, I, I just picked up uh, Life is Strange. And I played about halfway through the episode and then my daughter found out and she got <laughs> really mad at me. Oh shit, you shouldn't have done that. But I wanted to play it. <laughs> she was home, and so I had to start over. So, <laughs> so Good now, job, I, asshole. well, it sucks because she's got all these things going on. I've got all these things going on, but I guess it forced us to spend time together. So that's cool. So Life is Strange too, um, really awesome so far. Um, there's yeah, I really like this part that she hasn't got to yet because we're playing it over again. That's the two brothers um, kind of figure out how to survive in this forest park and i really like the way that they've you know recreated a forest park in a video game it feels fairly realistic like the little paths all the like random garbage you run into out in the woods and the Hmm. nature sounds and uh, i'm digging it um you also get a a little bit of taste in the first like i don't know 20 minutes of the first episode what the power is going to be because you know life is strange is like kind of based around like random superpowers the yeah. first, first one was like like stopping time and the thing of it is the way that things went down i'm not sure which brother has the power and that makes it interesting like it it sort of portrays it like it's the older brother who you're mostly controlling but it, it also might be the younger brother who you're trying to protect in the in this world so i'm interested to see who actually has the power and weird like how it manifests all right um, but yeah it it looks like Really good. It's back to the A team of Don't Nod games. It's not the um, Before the Storm, the other, which was a good game, but it just uh, had definitely had a different level of production quality. Um, so I'm excited for Life is Strange 2. Um, only the first episode's out now. I'll be playing with my daughter, and you'll probably hear more about it in the coming weeks. Sweet. So, other games that come out this week. You want to talk about them? Yes. All right. After you uh, start that. Talking about this? Yep. Another another track from my first All right. So we got Brawlhall coming out from the Switch, the Xbox One, Carnival Games, PS4, Switch, Xbox One. Uh, Dara Sign, VR, PC, or uh, sorry. That's one of the PC. developers of uh, Dark Souls. Yeah. Full Metal Fury's Switch, Grip, coming out on the PC, PS4, Xbox One, and Switch. Minecraft Story Mode Season 2, Nintendo Switch. Overkill is a Walking Dead PC, Omen of Sorrow PS4, Road Redemption PS4, Rogue Legacy Nintendo Switch, Star Bear Taxi VR PS4, Siren, Siren VR PS4, The Forest PS4, The Shape Shifting Detective PS4 Switch, Xbox One, Transpose VR PS4, World of Final Fantasy Maxima PC, Xbox One, PS4, and Nintendo Switch. 
agents versus villains. Xbox One. Crypto Gamo. Nintendo Switch Edition. Nintendo Switch. Deru, The Art of Cooperation. Nintendo Switch. Doodle God. Crime City Xbox One. Holy fucking potatoes! A spy story. PC. Leisure Suit Larry. Wet Dreams Don't Die. Wait, wait. Are you getting code for that? Yeah, I got a code for that. Oh, yeah. You got to tell me about that. Uh, Wet Dreams Don't Dry. PC. Ew. Steel Rats. PS4. Astabreed Switch. Battlezone Gold Edition. Nintendo Switch. Crashlands. Nintendo Switch. I highly recommend the game. I played through that whole entire game on my Android device. Fucking amazing game. Uh, Johnny's Turbo Arcade Breakthrough Switch, Johnny Turbo's Arcade, Night Slashers Nintendo Switch, Mecha Nika. Mecha Nika? Mecha Nika Nika. Uh, Switch, Xbox One, Mercenaries, Wings, The False Phoenix Nintendo Switch. Hold on. Fear Break. There's a lot of games coming out this week. Skyforce Anniversary Nintendo Switch. Siberia 1 and 2, Nintendo Switch. The Bug Betcher. Butcher. Uh, Holy butcher. shit. Betcher. Bet. I'll bet you your ass it's a butcher. Nintendo Switch. The Walking Vegetables. <laughs> Radical Edition. Nintendo Switch. Um, Timber Tennis. Verse. Versus, sorry. We um, ran out of Tetris Effect music. I know. Here, yeah, here's, so, here's the PS, uh, PS Vita here, menu I can play music. Again. Okay. PS4, Switch, Valiant Hearts, The Great War, Nintendo Switch, Varian, Nintendo Switch. Holy fuck balls. <laughs> You're 11 almost there. Dash 11. You're almost there. Memories Retold, PS4, Chasm, Xbox One, Colladate? Collidate? Cola. Oh, wow, that's a hard one. Yeah. Cola. Cola. Cola dot. I think you got it. Oh, close enough. Coli Dalot, Switch, Forgotten and Nintendo Switch. Hitman 2, PC, PS4, Xbox One, Nor, Chronicles, City of Crime, Nintendo Switch, Stick Type, Xbox One, Tetris Effect, PS4. Yes! Maybe it is just PS4 only. Townsman, coming to the Nintendo Switch. That was a lot of games. That was a shitload of games, man. Um... So until next week, guys, you can find us over at Facebook.com. Oh, we're still playing music. All right. You guys can face over at Facebook.com forward slash Punk Play Show. Twitter and hold on. Actually, Cast Junkie just went live. Yeah. So you guys can go over and check out Cast Junkie on uh all of social media. What is Cast Junkie, Zach? So Cast Junkie is a new podcast put on by me. And I got some really sweet... I got some really, like, uh... Hold on one second. I got some, got some really cool shit. I'll show you. Hold on. If I go over here and I do this, and I do that... Here's the intro for Cast Junkie. Let me tell you about Cast Junkie, Tim. Cast Junkie is a podcast that's going to help you shine a light through the podcast fog. Thanks to you. Um, and what we are planning on doing is covering a podcast every week. Starting out, anyways. I'm maybe toiling with like twice a week, but I'm going to start with once a week. And basically, we just highlight a podcast, talk about why we enjoy the podcast, the pros, the cons of it. We give you a sample of the podcast, and then we're done. The shortest episode I have so far is three minutes. The longest I have so far is ten minutes. So somewhere in that range, um, and it'll be coming out. Introduce you to some podcasts. That's cool. Exactly. Um, There's so many of them out there to pick from, and not enough time to listen to them all. So let Podcast Junkie weed out the bad ones that you are not interested in, and that'll be coming out November nineteenth. And you can always check out Plug and Play Podcast at Facebook.com forward slash Plug and Play Show, Twitter and Instagram. Twitter and Instagram at Plug and Play Cast, YouTube.com forward slash Plug and Play Show. And until next week, don't forget to check us out at TheBunchMasters.com, PlugMoveGamer.com. Don't forget to prime and shine. Oh. It's okay. No. 
This is the part where you usually expect me to say fuck Nazis. But that's I, true. I'm not going to... Well, now, I guess I now we're doing some weird... This is a little bonus. Like, you can stop listening now. The, the show's over. This is a the fucking weirdest PSP game I've played, and that's saying something. Um, it's got full motion video, and you're going to hear part of it. No um, goblin. Uh, so, like, I this is a roundabout that I talked about earlier. So, like I said, you can totally, like, stop playing the podcast and go to sleep or go take out the garbage or whatever you want to do. Or go masturbate. I mean, if that's your thing. But I'm going to describe part of what you're seeing. What was on his head? I don't know. Um, so you're a chauffeur ah, driver. The city of Roundabout. The big twist. So imagine a bunch of stock footage of people spins. driving. If you can drive through here, you can drive through anywhere. Now, you might notice that things are a little peculiar around here. Well, that's because this is Roundabout. Everyone does things different around here. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Alright, so now I'm going to start as the chauffeur driver in like a driving test exam. Hi there, uh, Gio Riggio Manis. The fuck? Meet Giorgio Manis. There's actual video going on right now. Like, super cheesy B actor Great. movie. Well, I'll be the instructor for your limousine operator's test, so just keep things straight and quick, and this will be over ASAP. Hmm. If only our pal here could see inside Giorgio's head. See, there's only one way this chauffeur drives. And it's with a twist. Giorgio never stopped revolving. <laughs> Giorgio You're literally revolving fucking revolving the whole goddamn time. Yep. Oh, shit. People, small obstacles... Nothing could stop <laughs> I just ran over a bunch of people. Oh well, shit! Except for buildings, lamp posts, you know, things taller than a. <laughs> well, I guess you passed. Apparently, <laughs> here's your driving report. You'll get one of these after every ride. Enjoy the thrilling world. She's wearing white gloves, by the way. Transportation industry, I guess. The fuck. With a limo license, the world was Giorgio's oyster. Passengers everywhere would experience a true... Alright, I just picked up my first passenger. Mickey Mickey the Mechanic. He's got grease on his face. I've never seen anyone drive like you just did at the DMV. Can you show me some more? I need a ride to my shop down the block. So there's little arrows and there's coins I can pick up. And then there's like checkpoints. (laughs) And like... You have to understand that... Oh, I just blew up. This this uh, limousine is, like, literally rotating as I'm driving and crashing into shit. This spinning the... thing is even better from the inside. No. This is, like... If you were riding this limo... This is, like, a fucking puke hazard. You would... Yeah, you would so vomit inside of my limo. This... This is the future of transportation. No. No, it's not. I'm on fire now. The fuck? Oh, I'm going the wrong way. Hold on. Okay, cool. I, I got to the uh, check. Wow, the... kid. Have you ever thought of going pro? <laughs> Look, if you what ever want to take on the city, just come back to me. Hell, I'll even help you out with parts. You and me, kid, we could go all the way. <laughs> okay, okay. You Does she ever me. say anything, it's I wonder? It's weird. But, kid, seriously, think about it. I'll be right here at the garage. <laughs> So let me try to pick up one more passenger, and then we'll we'll quit this little thing. But Zach, on a scale of one to ten, like how how bizarre would you say this is? It's uh, it's Crazy Taxi Grand Theft Auto. I'm, I'm running over so many people right now. All right, I blew up. You blew up. You're I, done. I'm gonna call it. You're here You're fucking now. done. All right, I'm done. Yeah, you're done. Thanks for listening. I guess all yeah. two of you kept going. Yep. Actually, it's probably just one. All right, that's fine. But, uh, that's I can fine. accept that. Yeah. All right, well, until next week, have a good week, guys. Try not to run people over. And if you do, just keep going. Just don't fucking stop. <laughs>